So we're in a rented landlord property. So this is typically what you'll come across. You'll be asked to pat test in a, in a kitchen, most probably. So here we have just a standard fridge freezer here. Um, it's plugged in right down the back there. So the biggest piece of advice I can give when pack testing in rented accommodation and you're needing to pull out appliances from the wall is to first thing, keep an eye on the floor. If it's lino, you've got a, a high risk there that you're gonna rip the floor in when you pull out something like a fridge freezer. Now this is quite a nice Samsung fridge freezer. It's got wheels on the bottom. Um, this is also a tiled floor. So it's really easy to um, to pull that out and get to the plug behind and test. Over here, we've got an integrated dishwasher and we've got a pull out uh, standalone washing machine. Now, luckily for me, the plug for the washing machine and the dishwasher is behind there. So I can get access. A lot of the time, a plug for the integrated dishwasher will be behind and there's no way of pulling that out. Um, I actually put a disclaimer on my website to say that I'll only test appliances that are freestanding. You don't want to go unplugging um, or unscrewing integrated appliances because they're often tied in with with plinths underneath and they're all siliconed in or screwed in and you don't want to go damaging property. So I just put a disclaimer there. Um, so luckily for me, I can test both of those. Obviously, another thing to worry about Pulling out a washing machine, it might have metal feet. You want to be very careful that you don't scratch the floor again. You know, totally appreciate that um, they're a very heavy um, appliance. You know, they've probably got a big lump of concrete in the bottom or something. Um, so, but but where you can, you want to be pulling out. You, um, especially on a lot of older properties, you'll get rodents or mice, um, or worst case, you get rats. Um, behind kitchen worktops and coming up through gaps in the floor and things like that. So you want to be checking the flex, uh, checking the cable that there's no um, chewing from rodents or there's no thing, nothing that's nibbled through the cable and the um, the uh, inner copper is exposed. So it's always worth um, trying to pull the appliances out where you can, but be very careful not to damage the landlord's property. What you also need to be very careful of when pulling out washing machines is you need to be careful that you don't snag or pull too tightly on either the waste pipe or the water pipe. So you can see there, that's as much as I can pull it out um, because then the pipes go behind, behind the dishwasher um, through to the sink. So I've actually isolated the water supply. There's a little valve under the sink. So just in case you get any uh, leakage or you pull too hard, you're not gonna flood the kitchen. I'm always very aware of this when testing. Um, there are some properties that I go to, um, you can't pull the washing machine out far enough to test. And you don't wanna go disconnecting pipes and things like that. You're a, you're a pat tester, not a plumber. You know, so if, if you can't test something safely and adequately without damaging uh, or risk flooding the property, um, then just don't do it and just make a note for the landlord, put it on your paperwork as to why you haven't tested that item and you can cover yourself. There's no point trying to force yourself to pat test something um, when it's not safe to do so. So in this particular property here, you've got an extractor fan above the, uh, the hob but you can clearly see it's a plug-in one. Now, some of these are what I would call integrated, but there's no visible signs of a plug. And they're probably hardwired into the mains and you probably have a few spur down below or something. This one clearly has got a, a physical plug to it. Um, so it needs testing. So you would carry out a full visual inspection of the plug and the flex that's on the show. Um, Check the fuse is correct. Um, that can be done by checking the uh, flex size of the cable. And you can also check um, the motor rating as well on these. Some of these, very rarely, I, th I think they would need a 13 amp fuse. You, you typically you see a five or a 10 amp fuse on these, but of course it all depends on the flex size and the rating of the motor. 
and then you can carry out um, uh, earth continuity. This would be classed as a, um, well, I say it would be classed as a class one appliance. Some of these, although they've got a metal exterior, um, the flex is continuous all the way into the motor and the motors may have a class two symbol on them. So don't get confused um, if, if they've got an all metal case, um, they might have a class two symbol on the motor. Um, so you would carry out a class two test, but obviously still putting your probe on the metal um, casing just to check that there's no um, degradation of the flex going through to the motor and it could possibly touch the metal casing and um, be a risk of electric shock. Um, so it's always something to look out for. Um, don't always assume that because it's a metal cased appliance um, that it is class one. Um, so it's just something to, to be wary of. But always refer to the uh, manufacturer's instructions or manuals um, to uh, see what class the particular appliance is. So just to confirm this particular uh, cooker hood, um, you can just see it there. Um, the lamps uh, rated at one two watt LED lamp and then the motor is rated at 65. So there's actually a three amp fuse in this, um, which, which is correct. It also is a class one appliance. Um, you can see on the label there, there is an earth provision you can probably just see if it's not too dark up there. Um, there is an um, earth um, cable uh, connected to the actual metal casing uh, of the item. So you would test this as a class one appliance. This one's quite good actually, because it's new. The label hasn't been covered in grease. It hasn't peeled off. So that's a really handy thing to find. But a lot of the older cooker hoods, um, you don't have any markings or labels on them at all. So it can be quite difficult. But um, if in doubt, always check first. So that's the cooker hood all tested and labelled and checked. So the last thing to check is the oven. We've got a single oven down here, a pretty bog standard Bosch single oven. Um, it's going to have to be pulled out and checked. Um, sometimes they're hardwired, sometimes they're plugged in. Either way, they need to be checked. Um, the only way of doing it is uh, to unscrew it here. Sometimes you'll just have a regular screw or these ones have got like um, a Torx, um, like a star bit. So always handy to keep some of them in your um, toolbox. <coughs> um, it needs to be pulled out because you will often find, um, I mean, this, this one's quite new, but um, on a lot of kitchens, um, the electrical connections behind are a little bit suspect so it's always worth pulling out this one might be a plug on it I would suspect um, just because it's a, um, a more basic oven so lower wattage um, so they, they would have um, a, a, a regular plug on them but you never know uh, when it's been installed that could have been chopped off it could have been put into a, a junction box of some description so you need to pull it out just give it um, a thorough check behind and then see whether we can actually do a, a pack test on the machine to it. So here we are, we've pulled the oven out. As suspected, this particular oven has got a 13 amp. Um, it's got a molded plug on it. Bosch are actually quite good. Um, you either get a molded plug um, and the flex either is hardwired into the back or they have their kind of, it looks like an IEC cable sometimes on Bosch ovens, which kind of is like a click fit into the back of the oven so you get a really good connection and um, this particular one actually goes straight into the back so there's no terminals on the back but sometimes on some ovens you'll get like a terminal box where some flex has been wired into and then it's plug stuck on the end so just important just to check the connections at both ends this oven's fairly new but always make sure you check the pins Check there's no sign of burning or overheating on the plug. And then you can test in the normal way. Um, as for the hob there, the hob is connected by some, uh, looks like four mil twin and earth on that one. Might be six mil twin and earth. Um, it still needs to be checked. Now, if you carry out fixed appliance of testing, um, that, that would be carried out uh, under that. I don't actually carry that out. I only carry out appliance testing with plugs attached. 
but I would still carry out a visual inspection um, on this again just to check there's no damage to the flex and that it just looks um, well connected at both ends but I don't actually um, do anything with the, with the uh, junction box there I wouldn't actually unscrew that or anything um, it only carry out fixed appliance testing uh, if you feel competent to do so um, and you've taken the relevant training um, uh, to, to do that and you feel confident and competent uh, to do it. Uh, there are courses out there that you can also take um, to do fixed appliance testing. Um, but if in doubt, uh, like I say, always um, consult either a qualified electrician or somebody that is competent in carrying out uh, fixed appliance testing. Um, speak to another company locally that may do it. You may be able to buddy up with them and or they could do the job for you.